I'm Caitlin Colvin Waldron. I'm a librarian, I'm an archivist, I'm a consultant for college essay writing, and I'm here to help you. Um, what this workshop is, is a pro as approximate to an actual workshop as we can get it in the virtual format. So what that means is that for this first session, I'm going to do a little presentation um, on some tips, some tricks, some things to keep in mind when writing your college essay. Um, and then that part's gonna be recorded and the recording has started. So keep your, um, keep your cameras off until afterwards. And then after I do the introductory uh, video and I think someone else, okay. Um, after I do the introductory uh, presentation, we're gonna move into the actual workshop part. So what that looks like is um, we're going to talk either as a group or one-on-one. -on -one. When we did this last year, it was mostly us conversing via the chat feature. You can chat directly to me about ideas you may have, questions you have, anything at all. Um, I'm trying to approximate one-on-one -on -one, um, one-on-one -on -one, uh, like conversations as much as possible. Um, you can send me files, I can read them, I can do a revision, we can hash it out together. Um, and that's what is what the workshop's gonna look like. If you don't have anything yet, also totally fine. I'm assuming that you're all coming in here, you may have some ideas, but you have nothing written. That's kind of where my baseline expectations are at. If you have more than that, great. But since it's August, you're doing really well from being here right now anyway. After the session, I'll get to know you a little bit where you're at, what grade you're in, what you're hoping to get out of this. But um, I'm gonna start with the presentation. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay. Can we all see my screen? You can do a little thumbs up. Cool, great, thank you. So writing the college essay. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to, there we go. So it's a very daunting task, is it not? I always find personally that a blank page is the most anxiety provoking thing that I can come up against in any kind of assignment, in any kind of work. A blank page stresses me out. Getting started is the hardest part for me. It may not be for you, but I'm going to operate from, like I said at the beginning, that we are all kind of starting from the beginning. Um, if that's not you, that's fine. Hang in there. We'll go over some strategies on writing and revising later on, but let's start from the ground up here. Blank page, very anxiety producing, very scary. If you don't know who you're writing to, what you're writing about, it makes that the task seem that much more monumental, that much harder to do, and therefore scarier. And who wants to deal with that when you're trying to successfully complete, complete an application for one of the biggest parts of your life, which is college, obviously. So I'm here to help with the blank page anxiety. And this is how we're gonna break down this presentation into a few sections. It's before we start writing, getting everything down on the page, and then editing, revising, and polishing. Um, we're gonna spend a lot of time on the before we start writing part. So um, like I said before, if that's not you, I mean, it's always good to be able to like think with an open mind, even if you have a draft, maybe you're not quite happy with it yet and you wanna maybe start over from scratch or if you wanna have in your head an idea of, you know, a different strategy, if this one doesn't quite work out, we're gonna spend a lot of time thinking about before we start writing. The next thing is just, writing that first draft and getting it all down and things to keep in mind for that. And then the last section is just kind of going in and making sure you're submitting the very best version of this essay that is in you. So let's start with how to start. The two big questions that you gotta keep in mind when you're writing a college essay from the very beginning of the process right till the very end. Who's writing the essay, one, and who's reading it? And there are very simple answers to both of those questions. Who's writing this essay? You are writing this essay. 
all of the words that are going to go down on that page are coming from you. They're being informed by you and any point of view that you have is coming from your own lived experience. Who is reading this essay? That's a little bit trickier. It's the college admissions team. It could be one person, it could be a whole slew of people, it could be a committee, it can be whatever, but it's the college admissions team at the college that you are applying to, no one else. All right, that is your audience. So who is this essay not for? This is useful to keep in mind as parameters when you start thinking about what you're going to write about and how you're gonna structure it and how you're going to balance tone and pacing and all of those fun things that we're gonna get into a little bit later on. But to keep, you have to keep in mind, who are you not writing for? The first bullet, anyone, anywhere. This is very important. A lot of people, they go into these things, it's much like cover letters, which you probably also don't really have that much experience with, but college essay writing, personal essay writing, it's for, for the college application process. It's not for, it's not one size fits all. You're not gonna write the same essay that you would for a newspaper or um, an essay contest that you're gonna submit to your school, anything like that. It's for college admissions. You're writing it for an audience of admissions counselors who will hold the decision of whether you get into the school that you want to or not in their hands. You don't want it to be generic. You want it to be very, very specific. It's not for friends or family. This is also a hard one to keep in mind and also keep in mind when you're writing the essay proper. I run into a lot of people who, you know, they kind of write from a familiar point of view, which is fine, but it also can leave out um, details that are crucial when you're speaking to someone who doesn't know you. Friends and family, you can refer to that corner store down the street and they're gonna know exactly what you're talking about, whether it's a Walmart or a deli or a bodega or whatever. But if you just say the store down the street in your essay, the reader is not gonna have any idea what you're talking about. That's a very specific example, kind of boring, but it can be extrapolated out to any kind of writing that you're doing. It has to be specific. It also has to be explanatory enough that you are getting through to people who don't know you. The essay is not for teachers. You're not getting a grade on this. Um, some people view getting into the college as, you know, pass fail in a, that kind of metaphor. I don't particularly like to think about it that way because it, a college essay is not the one thing that's going to get you in or keep you out of a college. It's part of a much larger package that taken holistically will be evaluated by the college admissions team. So a teacher, even though that you have the most practice writing for a teacher, you're not writing for a teacher, you're not writing uh, an English literature assignment, you're not writing a lab report. It's a very specific, very specific narrative to your own lived experience. Who is this essay for? Like I said before, it's for you to explain yourself and the college admissions team to get to know you. That's it. So with that in mind, you have to remember the only thing that a college admissions counselor wants to glean from this essay is they want to get as best as possible a sense of whether the student who writes that essay is going to succeed at their institution. And that means a bunch of different things to a bunch of different people, but they want you to succeed. If they admit you, they want you to succeed. So you want to demonstrate to them why you will be successful at whatever institution you decide to apply to. And in that is what is the point of an essay in your college application? It's going to demonstrate that. How are you going to succeed? Can you do the level of work the college requires? Are you a good fit for the school? And are you likely to contribute to the school? I'm taking these questions from some of the um, college essay books that are available here at Levittown Library or online, um, but a lot of them follow the same path. So you want to demonstrate that you are a good writer, you can synthesize ideas in a concise manner, level of work the college requires. Are you a good fit for the school? Are you talking about your passion for a very regimented scientific laboratory environment and sending that essay to um, a college, uh, an arts college? That doesn't make a lot of sense and will cause a flag in an application for um, one or the other. 
Are you likely to contribute to the school? Is it the environment of the school itself? Like, are you very interested in being in a city environment and having a million things going on all the time and having lots of opportunities? Maybe not want to talk about that in an application essay to the University of Iowa, let's say, right? We have to keep everything all um, angles at all times. So ultimately, this comes from another book that um, I referenced in the, at the end of the presentation. Ultimately, when we ask, what do admissions officers read for? The answer is a reason to accept you. They want to accept you. They can't accept everyone. But what an essay can do is push a okay application over the top, or it can give a great application on paper a little bit of pause if there's a mismatch in those three questions we were talking about earlier, um, rigor, culture, and um, contribution. So before you get started actually writing, you have to come up with a topic. So uh, I have a couple of uh, exercises for brainstorming topics. Um, it can be a really, really hard part of this process, um, just thinking about what you want to write about. It just seems like such a big momentous kind of, it, you to get your life story into, I think it's 650 words on the common app, it seems kind of insurmountable. And you want, you can't talk about your whole life because who can in 650 words? Who can in 650 pages? We can't. So we have to find a good topic so that you can share enough about yourself and really let it shine, whether it's a specific anecdote, whether you're talking about your um, history with a certain organization, what kind, what major you want to uh, focus on when you get to school, things like that. But picking a topic is probably the most important part of this whole process, and it can be the most daunting part because if you don't have a good sense of what these colleges want from you, it can be a little overwhelming, which is which is fine. So we have some strategies here, and we can do these strategies later on in the workshop portion of this program. Um, if you don't have any idea, which is a great place to start at having no idea, because sometimes when you start with a more calcified idea of what you know you wanna write about, it's harder to fit into um, some of the narratives that the Common App and the colleges typically like to read about. Um, so let's go forth. So these are this year's common app questions. I think they're almost exactly the same as last year's questions. And these are very familiar narratives. You know, you have what part of yourself and your identity would you be incomplete without? What are the lessons that you learned from a challenge? What happened when you question a belief that you held tightly? think about and explain to us something someone else has done for you and you want to talk about how I think what how they phrase it how this gratitude has moved you or motivated you these seven questions they're good to start with because even colleges that have their own questions these are the these are the questions when they're boiled down to you can't, these are the main narratives that colleges want to hear from, from you. They just want to hear about your experience um, and what sparked you to go in the direction that you see yourself moving into in college and after college as well. So, oh, and um, you can find this on the Common App website um, if you haven't already signed up on the Common App for a um, account of your own. So the first exercise um, is pretty simple. It's called essence objects exercise. All it is, is you sit down with a piece of paper, both of these exercises, you're sitting down, blank piece of paper, pen, and you want to first imagine a box. The box is sitting in front of you on the desk. In the box is a set of objects. Each object represents one of your fundamental qualities. Each You're gonna write down each of these objects and you are going to think about each one and how it represents who you are. And I like this exercise because you're, you're kind of externalizing qualities in physical 
objects. And that connection of a kind of like an inherent quality to an external object, it gets you thinking about how to externalize your story in some way. Um, I like to do this exercise, uh, start with 10 objects, stop, think, and write next to each one of them uh, three sentences about why this object particularly resonates to you and can explain your essence to someone else. So for me, for example, I would have my pen, I would have um, my cat's collar, I would have my, um, uh, what was that thing that hangs from your dashboard? Like a, like one of those tchotchkes, I've had it forever from my grandmother, things like that. And what does it mean to you? I like to write, I like to read. Words are a big, important part to me. That's what the pen externalizes. You can talk about that in your essay and kind of just let that narrative go. So that's, and that's the first exercise. And remember with these exercises, when you're doing them, it's not you're trying to get the whole narrative in front of you right away. It's just brainstorming. If you have a list of 10, you're going to get rid of nine of them. So feel free to get messy and kind of, even if it doesn't make sense, just put it down on the paper and get going. This is really good for when you have no idea where to start. You're going to make a list, externalize what's intrinsic to yourself. So the second exercise, very similar to that, it's kind of a cheat because you're not really doing anything fun like externalizing a physical object to represent you. You are just making a list of 20 topics. It has to be 20, one through 20. You have a piece of paper, you're gonna number it one to 20. You have to have 20 different topics and you cannot have any repeats. And I guarantee you, you're gonna start running out right around number eight, but you have to get to 20. That's the point of the exercise. You have to have 20 individual topics of things that you can write a 650 word essay about. It will get weird. It will get strange. You can, you're gonna end up looking at the ceiling and saying, can I write about the crack in the ceiling? I don't know. Sometimes ideas for essays come from very strange places that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise except to be in this particular kind of like crunch for topics. So these are the two exercises I really, really like the most and think they get the most interesting material out of students from. So if you are in a brain, like a, a brain fog on this particular topic, brainstorming a topic, I would recommend you start with one or the other, whichever one sounds good to you. Carve out an hour and a half, sit down on an afternoon and just kind of start writing. So these are some tips about choosing a topic. This comes from a different book. I have a little bibliography at the end that um, if you have any interest in any of these topics or books, um, you can take them out, read them. There are some really good resources at Levittown Public Library and on the um, Libby app as well. So we can go through these one by one. Um, so stay small and close. What that means is you're not trying to solve world hunger in your 650 word essay. You wanna take a small topic that can then, you can then bring some color to elaborate on, spend some time kind of marinating in, and it won't, you're not trying to answer the big questions. You can, you can get right up next to the big questions, but you're not trying to you know, solve world hunger, finish, you know, solve climate change. You're not trying to do that in your essay. You can talk about why climate change is important to you as a person, but that involves yourself. It can involve, I don't know, an environmental science teacher that you had that really made an impact on you. You wanna make it personal. Um, the second tip, you don't need a tragedy. This is a big one. I'm sure even this tip is now a cliche. You, but I'm going to reiterate it anyway, just because I feel like everyone in the back of their heads thinks, oh, I'm kind of normal. I don't have this, this narrative where, you know, I triumphed over traditional forms of adversity. Like I, and if you did, you know, you can also talk about that as well, but the, you don't need to have experienced great loss, great 
adversity. You, you experience loss and adversity in every day of your life. You can talk about those things, but don't think that you need to amp up your experiences in a false way just so that you can be the saddest or the most triumphant. That's people, when they read those kinds of narratives can kind of sniff that out a mile away. And you don't want to do that. Um, take little bites out of big issues, very similar to stay small and close. Um, if you want to talk about big social issues, big research issues, big anything like that, you don't want to talk from the top down. You want to go from the ground up. So you don't want to start out with, I am going to solve racism in America in 2021. You want to start out with how things affect you personally and how you're going to bring that to your academic career. Little bites, big issues. You can embrace cliches, but only as a starting point. Cliches, I find, are very useful in kind of like you know what, I don't know where to start. Let me write down, it was a dark and stormy night if you know that's applicable to you and then go from there. And then later on, you can come back and cut the cliche. I find that it's a very useful writing technique for me. It might be for you. Um, think about your core values. What's important to you? Are you honest? Are you motivated? Do you, um, what, motivates you every day and how can you tie your own core value to an experience you had or your own dreams and um, plans for the future thinking about that is a very useful way of how to how to pinpoint a topic for a writing topic for you to expound upon um, in your essay writing experience and the last one is don't get discouraged that's the biggest one for me personally you can pick a topic that you think is great, write a first draft, write a second draft, and get to the end, think that it's just fine. And then as long as you have time, you can start all over again. Last year, when I ran this program, I had a couple of people who, you know, came in with essays that were just fine. And they were really, ex they weren't so much excited about them, but thought that that's what they needed to write. And I went back and forth with these students um, many times and we got to the end on like the third uh, workshop day and we, you know, it wasn't working. They were trying to force it and it wasn't really connecting. And so I kind of took a step back and we would talk about, well, what's, what about this topic do you like? What, tell me more about this other situation that's related. And then we would land on a different topic, but then once you hit on something that you actually do like, then you can go from there. And each of those two students that I mentioned last time, they chose totally different topics, but because their heart was in it this time, they wrote outstanding essays. So don't get discouraged. The next section is how to write the essay. Um, there are certain things that you should keep in mind. So we're gonna start first with structure. This is how you organize your essay. It's very important because you do not have a lot of time. You don't have 650 words go very, very, very quickly. So you need to get to the point. You need to make that point hard and make it eloquently. And if you dare, you can be funny, but that's also high risk, high reward. Um, Structure is the most important thing when you're actually writing the essay, because if you know what beats you want to hit, then you can plan out when you want to hit them. And then you'll know exactly how much room you have to make those points and get to an emotional climax at some point in the essay and drive that point home so people remember it. So when you're thinking about structure, the two main ones that I find in college essay writing, you can either have a narrative or a montage. Um, you can blend the two sometimes, but I find that uh, you either straightforward narrative, what's the status quo and how or why did it change? So how do you get from point A to point B or a montage where you have a focusing lens or a central me metaphor? So what that means is if say like 
animal right animal rights are important to you you can take different episodes from your life of like your own pets other people's animals a trip to the zoo and kind of bring them all together in one narrative of um, animal rights animating you your um, passion for this particular industry blah 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 narrative it's like I said point a to point b you can take detours in the narrative to get but you eventually have to end at point b that both generally show an amount of change and growth. Um, growth is important. Um, you want to, um, well, I just lost my train of thought. I think that was the end of this slide. So when you're organizing, especially when you have an outline, think about what kind of approach you want to take a narrative or montage, and then that's how you are going to approach your outlining. The other thing to keep in mind when you are outlining and then actually writing, especially the early drafts, is separating situations from story. So a situation is kind of like the narrative and what's happening in the immediate um, vicinity of the actual story you're telling. So I'm going to use these words kind of interchangeably, which is not going to help. But <laughs> so if you're narrating a story of um, like your 16th birthday, the situation would be, you know, the dance floor at the catering hall that your dad and mom rented out for your big party. And you're in the middle of the floor and you're telling a lot of action, what's happening. You're dancing, you see your friends, you, you see the pile of presents, all of that. That's just off the top of my head. The story is the why. What's the story actually about? Why are you telling a college admissions counselor about your 16th birthday party? Could it be that you realize that you didn't love being the center of attention? How is that going to inform your journey at this college? What's the story actually about? Is it about how you realize you wanted to be surrounded by your friends and family as much as possible for the rest of your life? That's also totally valid, but there's a metaphor, it's kind of like working on a different level than what's actually happening in the narrative. And you have to be cognizant of both of those to tell a concise story. Um, the other things that we should keep in mind when you're drafting and then eventually, you know, at the end of the writing process as well is tone. This is a tricky one for a lot of students to master because um, it requires a level of writing that's pretty high. I know you all have it in you, but it's it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of practice, could take a bunch of tries to get it right. Um, you want to keep a pretty consistent tone in your essays, whether it is a humorous tone, a triumphant tone, um, kind of think of it like a genre of a movie. Like, are you going to see a comedy? Are you going to see a drama? What the same thing as when you go to see like a Will Ferrell movie. Is that is that a uh, relevant? Do you do you guys see Will Ferrell movies? Um, if you go to see a Will Ferrell movie and then you know there's a weepy plot line right drop down in the middle and that would cause kind of like a whiplash moment. Like why is this here? Why am I? Why is this movie trying to get me to cry after? having a Will Ferrell do like a fart joke in Step Brothers, you know, like it doesn't make sense. So you, that's kind of what I'm trying to get at with tone. You want to have an even tone um, through the whole essay. So the way to establish that tone is with a hook. It's your first paragraph, first couple of lines, even the very first line, even the very first word. Um, admissions, you have to think in the mind of an admissions reader. Depending on the um, college that you're applying to, an admissions reader could read anywhere from dozens to thousands of essays every season. Um, a lot of them read hundreds and they have to read every single one. They don't have any choices in the matter. You want to make that the um, when they're you want to make the reading of your essay as pleasurable as possible. You want to stand out. You need to grab their attention from the very beginning. There are different ways to do this. We can talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, as a group, whatever you like. Um, but 
this is also where it can get a little cheesy. It can get a little bit, you don't want to be over obvious. I find that when I am helping students revise their work, we spend the most time on the beginning and on the end because getting attention is hard in a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Getting attention is hard in a authentic way. That's not really kind of like a gimmick. You don't really want to do gimmicks, but if you're going to do a gimmick, it has to be the best gimmick that the submissions writer has ever read. Um, so I tend to advise students to stay away from gimmicks, but, and also the, um, the ending is pulling all of your threads together in a concise way that also leaves an impact. And then the other thing you want to keep in mind for tone is pacing. So if you have, I ran into this with a student last year where um, he would write, he, he was a very good writer, but he wouldn't get to the point. So we had a lot of exposition, very languorous, very, you know, no kind of hurry to the sentences, nice and long, very descriptive. And at the end of the essay, it's almost like he remembered, oh no, I have to make a point. And then in the last paragraph, um, kind of told the whole story in one paragraph and very action, action focused words. And that is going to also come across as jarring. So, I recommend in this instance to read your story out loud. And you know what? Um, I was thinking about this actually earlier today. Don't even read your essay out loud. Whatever story you're telling in your essay, tell it to someone else, whether it's your mom, your dad, your friends, tell that story and then tell it in a way that you want you're going to get a reaction from the person you're telling it to, whether they laugh, whether they kind of, whether they smile at you, whether they tell you they're proud of you at the end. And then remember kind of where you did your own verbal emphasis. So did you like, do you see how I'm doing this right now? Like verbal emphasis, where did you emphasize your words? Where did you do your own sound effects? Where did you kind of get real quiet and lean in and conspiratorial. All of those verbal flourishes, all of your hand moments, you can translate that into writing. It takes a skilled writer, but I have complete faith in all of you that you can translate all that to your story to make it sound as engaging as you possibly can make it. Um, then the last tip for this stage is don't think about it, just write. My worst fear, like I said at the beginning of this presentation, is the blank page. That is the biggest mountain that I have to climb is getting down anything. I always find that in my head, what I have to write has to be perfect, which doesn't make any sense because especially with you know your Google Doc or Word or whatever, you can go back and edit it as many times as you want. You just need to get something down. My favorite thing to do is just write your first draft as loose and as um, not expectant of anything. You just need to get any sentences on the, on the page at all, excuse me. And it could be just a pile of trash, but you have something now and you can kind of go back into that pile of trash and sift out anything that you actually want to keep. And then once you have something, you can build around it. Um, so if you have to just turn off your brain and do a free write, you can do that. If you just want to, you know, do as much as you can and then kind of put it away and not look at it for a few days, you can also do that. But I always, <clears throat> I always, I always say for the first draft, just put some, any words on the page in sentences. Okay. In sentences, but get them down on the page. Um, so we have a first draft. What do we do with it? We have to revise. Now this can be one revision. This can be 10 revisions. This is not a, when is it done? It's a, when is it as good as it's going to be or as good as you think that it's gonna be or how, is this the best version of it that you are capable of? Which is, could all mean the same thing, could mean different things at different, uh, different points in the essay writing process. 
first tip on this is take a break. Parents don't always like this tip, but I like to, especially with this kind of essay where it means so much and the subject matter is so personal and it could take so much to even get it on the page in the first place. Once you have a first draft, and if you have time, which you should, because you're all here in August, which I'm so proud that you're all here, um, thinking about it now, once you have that first draft, don't look at it for three days. I always recommend three days because that way you still have it in your head as something that you know what you were thinking at the time when you were writing it, but it's not so close that you aren't going to be able to pick up the differences from what you, you wrote and what you know you want to say. I find that three days is a good enough time to kind of go back to it with fresh eyes, but with a ready mind that you've already written it and you are in the headspace for it. But I like to take a break, come back to it, revise from there. So there's a couple of things here with revising and polishing um, and revising should be first. Polishing is gonna be the last thing that's on the list. Um, Revising is kind of getting back into the meat of the essay, getting into sentences, getting into the story to tweak different, um, all the things that we talked about before, whether it's the topic itself or the outline, whether you decide to take a narrative approach instead of a montage approach, if you want to move um, sentences around, ideas around, that's revising. That's gonna be the bulk of your um, editing process. Polishing will be the very, very end where you know you feel confident in the structure, where you feel confident in the content. You're just kind of making those sentences sting. So these are the differences between revising and polishing. So revising, you're, you're going to want to read it out loud. Like we were saying before, when you want to tell the story out loud, this is really about reading the sentences that you wrote. You can read it to someone else. You can read it out loud to yourself. I find that it's just as effective reading it out loud to myself as to other people when I talk about my own writing. Um, <clears throat> because when you say it out loud, you'll be able to tell whether it sounds good or not. And if it doesn't sound good, you're going to make a little mark and you're going to go back to it. You can cut it up. Another trick that I like to do is to triple space um, my essay and then kind of cut out the sentences. And if a sentence sounds better in a different place, you kind of almost like a puzzle, you're gonna be moving them around physically. And if you can see it in front of you, you can put the, you can plan out your narrative, your outline, your structure right in front of you, almost like, like a puzzle. Kill your dar darlings, that's a cliche piece of advice, but it sticks around for a reason. I had a student once who was so intent on using a very specific metaphor. Um, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what the metaphor was now, but it was, it was a beautiful metaphor and it did not fit their narrative at all because by the time that we got around to a great structure um, and organizing principle of the essay, the metaphor no longer made sense. But because she loved the metaphor itself, she wanted to keep it in any way possible. But at the end, it ended up just hurting her essay. So we had to cut it. And without it, the essay was stronger. Um, and then the biggest part about revising is you're going to rewrite, and then you're going to rewrite again, and then you're going to rewrite again, and then you're going to rewrite again. And it's going to be a continuing process, probably as long as you want as long as it takes to get to where you feel comfortable with it. The only thing to keep in mind with that is you're not going to be write, rewriting forever. You're going to have to have an endpoint at some point. So these revisions, this rewriting, rewriting process has to have um, has to have a really strong reason for happening. So like if you're just kind of fiddling around just to see what things, where things go and whether it works in a different way, you can do that, but you know, you only have so many words, you can't do that forever. You have to commit at some point. Um, and then polishing is, you know, it's your standard grammar, mechanics, spelling, vocabulary. Does the words you use in the specific instances make sense? Do you have 
stronger words to use? Are, is everything spelled right? Are all, does your grammar make sense? Are you using the active voice? Always use the active voice. A passive voice um, is only will only lend itself to a weak storytelling narrative. You want to be active. You want to be showing, not telling, all of that. And that is going to come across in grammar. And I learned this tip recently, actually, which um, has really helped my writing. Um, if you want to take this tip out of this um, presentation, it, that will I think it'll help you. It's to read your essay backwards sentence by sentence, because in your head, your head kind of like, especially on something like this, when you're um, working on it for so long, you want, you know, your head kind of supplies the next portion of it. If you work backwards, you're removing that familiarity and you can read for grammar mechanics and spelling a lot easier. So I highly recommend that strategy, but that's only at the very, very end when everything else, content, structure, um, all of that is in place and you feel good about it. And I think, yeah, so that's the end of the presentation. These are some books at Levittown. This one's my favorite, Write Your Way In. Um, Rachel Tor actually used to be a college admissions essay reviewer. And also she was a tutor for a very long time. And this book is really great for writing striking essays and um, very, she's very good at talking about style in a way that um, is accessible to high school students. And it can be daunting thinking about writing an essay with any kind of style. I know it's hard and kind of scary sometimes to have that kind of imprint, but it is doable. And she talks about it in a really great way. And then these other two books are kind of basics, but I find sometimes when you don't know where to start, just having very basic step-by-step -step guides are helpful. I actually have this one right here in front of me here. So yeah, that is the end of my presentation.